Hello everyone and welcome to the third day of the Meltwater Champions Chester Finals. It is Young Shit of Duda versus Anish Giri and it is the most requested game of yesterday. It is absolutely brilliant. It's uh, one of those games that uh, remind us why we enjoy chess as much as we do and uh, it's best to just uh, see what happens. So Duda with the white pieces opens with pawn to d4 and uh, at this point in the match uh, Duda was already leading by uh, a full point as the first game ended by Duda winning, second game ended in a draw, and this is now a third game. Uh, we have knight to f6 by Anish, c4, e6, knight to f3, and now pawn to d5, going for the queen's gambit declined, knight to c3, and now bishop to b4, going for the Ragoz in defense, c captures on d5, e captures, and bishop to g5. And here, it's a very standard position, h6 is the most common idea, uh, Anish goes for knight b to d7, this is the second most popular line, uh, rook to c1, uh, Duda brings the rook to the semi-open c file, h6, challenging the bishop, bishop to h4, and the g5 now, advancing the pawn all the way, bishop to g3, and now knight to e4, putting pressure on the bishop and on the knight on c3, and... Um Pretty much uh, in all the games that reach this position, knight to d2 was played, but the Duda plays queen to b3, which is the strongest move recommended by the engine. Uh, it's just that this position uh, hasn't really been reached since 2021, uh, unless in uh, you know aside from some online games. Uh, so probably the engines improved over the course of the year, and now queen to b3 is the most popular idea. Could be that that's the reason. Okay, bishop captures on c3, b captures, and now uh, there are a few online games where c6 was played but here we have knight to b6 by Anish and it is now as of move uh, 11 that we have a completely new game both moves are basically aimed at defending the d5 pawn by playing queen to b3 you are putting pressure on it uh, and now pawn to e3 we have pawn to h5 as the g5 pawn is now sufficiently defended you can advance the h pawn to play h4 and uh, here you, you just want to uh, trap the bishop uh, but here Duda plays something that uh, means that he probably had this um, prepared at home. It, it, it doesn't have to mean that. It could also mean that he just uh, found a very nice idea over the board, but he plays c4. And what does this mean? It means that your bishop is getting trapped, but why? h4 attacks the bishop, bishop to e5, and now pawn to f6, and you cannot save the bishop, but here's the idea. c4 was played with the uh, with the idea of playing c captures on d5, and okay, f captures on e5, uh, Anish grabs the bishop, and now bishop to b5 with check. And now, how do you organize a defense here? Uh, best to play is bishop to d7, but it's not easy to decide on this in a rapid game. Let's say something like knight captures on e5. Now you have to play knight to d6 to keep your b7 pawn defended. And if bishop captures knight captures, for example, white castles, you get this position that has it's pretty much equal. Uh, the b7 pawn is defended. The white has a massive center here. Black black is up a piece, uh, and you will you will try to survive this as black yeah, with perfect play. It should be should be uh, possible. Uh, but in the game, king to f8 was played by Anish, and now knight captures on e5. Already threatening knight to g6 check, maybe forking the king and the rook. So king to g7, even though uh, queen captures on d5 was the, was the safer way to do it, uh, you are not um, in trouble of losing the material here, you are in trouble of losing the game. King to g7, and now look at this, bishop to d3, attacking the knight here, uh, knight back to d6, now you no longer have access to the d5 pawn, and now Duda just castles. So now he's preparing f4 to bust open the f file, so g4, and now pawn to f4. Now again, Duda would be very happy if um, uh, Anish would open up the f file, so rook to f8, and now pawn to e4. Look at this massive center Duda has built here. Pawn to g3, and now pawn to f5, getting closer and closer to the black king, uh, queen to g5. You might think, uh, why move the queen? Why allow rook captures on c7? The problem is, even though white sacrificed a piece for the attack, black is playing without a bishop and without a rook, and there is no way to defend the c7 pawn. Uh, the knights, uh, for the moment, cannot defend the pawn, the, the rook uh, cannot come to f7, so you either defend the pawn with your queen, or you give it up to maybe at some point in the game, uh, develop your bishop and rook. So here, queen to g5, he wants to get the queen to e3, to d2 to go for the attack, hopefully, uh, and now rook captures on c7 with check. King to g8, and now bishop back to b1. Uh, 
uh, we have queen to d2. Uh, it's an excellent square for the queen. You are now threatening queen captures on d2 uh, on d4 with check. Also, you might have some plans of h3, which will threaten checkmate on g2. And of course, if you capture, then you get checkmate on h2. Uh, but to do that, place a uh, queen to f3. And what is this? Uh, what is this uh, uh, sorcery? Dare I say it? If queen captures on d4, check queen captures on e5. Can you just give up this knight? Uh, it turns out you can. Uh, for example, if you play something like queen captures on d4 check king h1 and queen captures on e5 just queen g4 check and black gets checkmated there's no way out of this king g king h8 queen to h5 check king j8 and queen to h7 will be checkmate so instead after queen to f3 anish says all right i have to play something otherwise i'm just dead here so bishop captures on f5 he gives up uh, a piece or gives the piece back so to say to connect his rooks and for the moment prevent queen to g4 and okay e captures on f5 Queen captures on d4, king to h1, and now again you are not in time to go after the knight. If you play queen captures on e5, then queen to g4 check is again uh, possible with the same checkmate. So after king h1, rook a to c8 by Anish. And now uh, you, there are so many moves you could play here, and I could ask you to pause the video here, but I decided to use this uh, uh, position as the position on the thumbnail, but I have a much nicer uh, position for you to solve, because here it's basically mate in 11. It's a forced mate in 11, there's nothing Anish can do about it, and Duda spots it, which is, uh, which is so interesting because you don't have to do it. Here, a rook to g7 check was played. Uh, uh, Duda sacrifices a rook, uh, but you can win the game with playing rook to e7. You just avoid the rook trade, or, or even you could offer a sacrifice with rook to h7. Everything works here, but rook to g7 check is just beautiful as it's forced. King captures on, F, uh, on g7, now f6 with check. And now if you go back, king to g8, look at this, bishop to h7 check, forces the king to the h file, Queen h5 check, king to g8, now queen g6 check, king goes to h8, and now of course queen to g7 checkmate. So instead after f6 check, king to h6 was played, stopping queen to h5, and this is where the thing is, where things get extremely interesting. Knight to g4 with check, king to g5, and now comes the move Duda had to see when he played rook to g7 check, or he just said, all right, let, let's wing it, you know, what, what bad uh, things could happen here. Uh, but feel free to pause the video and finish the game from this point on. It's now a forced mate in eight uh, with only one winning idea. Uh, so feel free to pause the video uh, and uh, try and crack this one while I give you a few seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting the only winning move in the position. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is queen to f5 that's the stuff uh now the black king has no squares and black's only move is to accept the queen capture it with the knight so knight captures on f5 was played now comes rook captures on f5 and now uh, there are only two choices for Anish. Do you want to get mated in one or do you want to get mated in six? If you capture on g4, then h3 is checkmate. That's the that's the idea. So Anish, of course, went back. He played king to g6, but now look at this. Rook to e5 check opens up a discovery. And he was in this position on move 33 that Anish Giri resigned the game as he is getting checkmated in the next five moves. I, I will just show, uh, if you play something like rook to f4 to go after the queen, you just lose the game terribly because after the king moves you you get checkmated rook to c1 you have to block and then you just get checkmated so it is absolutely crucial for you to find the forcing mate with rook to e5 check and now uh, okay Anish resigned here but just to show you what happens uh, uh, if you play king to f7 and that is your only move with the king uh, rook to e7 check king to g8 and now knight to h6 with check king to h8 and now rook to h7 will be checkmated so this is the checkmate that Duda saw and now I don't think he saw all the way to here but it's very interesting uh, if uh, if Duda saw uh, this uh, after rook to g7 check that he will be able to sacrifice the queen uh, with that queen to f5 move I mean if he saw this in a rapid game that's absolutely incredible and uh, for this reason alone and for you know maybe not alone but as it is a spectacular game I will for the 
first time in a very long time, which means it's not the first time, uh, award uh, one of the players, the most prestigious award a player could receive for his gameplay, and that is the Morphe Head. So Duda is awarded the Morphe Head, as you guys have requested. Uh, I award the Morphe Head, I just uh, didn't think um, some of the games that you guys thought that deserved a Morphe Head, I, I didn't really think so, but this one, this definitely deserves the Morphe Head, and now Duda is one of the few players in the world that uh, was awarded awarded the, the the most prestigious award available in the world and that is the morphe head uh so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys enjoyed it i mean truly spectacular we can just go at uh, go go through the uh 11 move combination one more time i mean uh, absolutely spectacular rook to g7 check king captures f6 check king h6 now knight to g4 check king g5 and now only winning move queen f5 check knight has to capture the queen Rook captures, now king g4 would be nice, but okay, king to g6, Anish wanted to prolong the game a little bit, rook e5 check, and now the game would continue, king f7, rook e7 check, king to g8, knight h6 check, king goes here, and now rook to h7 checkmate, truly spectacular, hope you guys enjoyed that, as uh, I mean, I was, I was so happy when I saw this game, uh, I hope some of you were as well, I mean, I hope all of you were, but um, uh, hopefully at least some of you. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Dean Bernal uh, G. And I would like to thank Ravishing Reptiles YouTube, Harry Barton, Marius Klimek, and Francis Ayer for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of this wonderful event uh, until it finishes. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.